Hi, I'm Tomer Tan from Dell Technologies. Matter Volume is a high availability and data mobility feature for parser storage and VMware vSphere. It provides symmetric active-active data access to Metro volumes for proactive use cases between parser clusters. In this demonstration video, I'm going to show you the different Metro configurations as well as how to configure a Metro volume on parser. In this figure, a pair of vSphere hosts accessing a Metro volume using uniform storage presentation. Both hosts have read and write access to the Metro volume. A replication link between the clusters is needed for synchronous replication to keep both sides of the Metro volume data consistent and in sync. Host IO on one parser cluster is only acknowledged to the host when IO has been written on both parser clusters. In this demonstration, I'll be focusing on uniform metro presentation. Uniform storage presentation provides hosts to metro volume storage paths through both clusters. The round robin path selection policy can quickly and easily be configured with uniform storage presentation and the host connectivity feature. Another supported configuration is non uniform storage presentation. This means that each host will access a metro volume through one cluster or the other, but not both. Non-uniform typically applies to a stretch cluster configuration with some distance in between where each host in the cluster accesses a metro volume through paths that are local in fabric proximity only. We start with an unconfigured metro volume on parser A and VMs that are running on E6B. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, the Linux virtual machine is generating random read and write IOPS. We navigate to Parser Manager and click on the host's icon, which leads us to the host overview where we can see the connected ESX host and configured host connectivity. For Parser A, the host ESX A is configured as co located with the system and ESXIB is configured as co-located with the remote system. With host connectivity settings, Parser provides implicit Alua settings to the ESXA host for optimal path selection. In this configuration, the co-located host gets the active optimized path for volumes on this array, while the remote host only gets active non-optimized paths. In the Volumes Overview tab, there is a heartbeat volume for vSphere DRS and an unconfigured volume supposed for metro volume configuration. An existing volume could be configured as metro volume in only a few clicks. First, select the volume and click on Configure Metro Volume underneath Protect pull down. The remote system, which is the peer parser cluster for this metro volume, needs to be selected. Once the configuration is completed, Parser immediately starts creating the volumes on the remote system and starts the initial synchronization. By navigating to the remote parser cluster, we can go to the volumes overview where the metro volume is already available and map the volume to the same ESXA host even though the volume is not fully synchronized. We can monitor the synchronization progress by navigating to volume protection, and metro volume, where we can see the progress of the initial synchronization. Once the initial sync is completed, the paths on remote parser cluster, parser B, are switching from dead into active, and ESXIB can start using the metro volume locally on an active optimized path to parser B. By navigating to our vCenter server, we can confirm that both virtual machines are running on ESXIB. In storage device configuration on ESXIB, we can see a single active optimized path indicated by active IO to local parser B cluster and active non-optimized indicated as active to parser A. Now, let's simulate a failure scenario and see what happens to the virtual machines on a parser metro volume when one of the arrays loses access. As we can see, on parser A, the metro volume status has changed to fractured. 
This means that I.O. could not be synchronized to the remote power store array. For Linux VM 001 at the bottom of the screen, we can see zero impact while I.O. is still running. In the vCenter server, all paths to local power store B went into state dead for E6IB, and the path to the metro volume on power store A changed from active no I.O. to active I.O., which means active optimized without impacting the host I.O. Once failure scenario is resolved, Parstore would re-establish the metro volume and allow the host I.O. to the volume after the volumes are back in synchronized status. I really hope you find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.